Now, normal Christian pastors, they, they don't make a big deal out of this. There's only just a small fringe of weirdos, yeah. and they call themselves KJV only, all right? So those are the weirdos that I'm going to refer to you. But majority of pastors, I mean, I'm talking about even non-denominational Methodist, Baptist, whatnot, they don't make a big deal out of this. So I'm going to be talking about can you pastor a church when you're single, when you're not married, when you don't have kids? So we're going to be covering that tonight. I've received emails from some people who want to get involved in the ministry, but they're not married and they don't have children. So there are some people who get discouraged about that. I know of some weirdo pastor out there who claim to be KJV only. They discourage pastors who run ministries and have been winning soul salvation, mm -hmm. and they don't have children. you got to realize this. Maybe the wife is barren then. Yeah. What are you going to do? Bash them on the head? Oh, you're not, uh, you're not qualified to pastor? That's, that's very evil of you to say that, to be honest. you got to be very caring about people's situations and sensitive what they're going through. You don't know all the reasons why they're still single or why, they're not, uh, why they don't have kids. Mm -hmm. You can't just slap them in the face, oh, you can't pastor a church. That's horrible. All right, well, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Is it fine? Well, this is what Paul says. He says right here in verse 7, For I would that all men, so Paul would that all men, even as I myself, but every man hath this proper, proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. What did Paul mean? Okay, so we're, we saw it 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 7. So can we be single to run... Can a pastor be single? That's the idea. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7, Paul says, I wish that, how many? How many people? He said all. Yeah. Okay. So he's saying all. He's, that means he's including, including married or singled, whatever. Okay? No exceptions. All were like him. Him in what way? Look at verse 8. I say therefore to the what? Unmarried and widows. It is good for them if they abide even as I. See that? Look at that. He prefers all to be single. So I'll be honest with you. Is it okay to be single to pastor? That's actually recommended for all. <laughs> you ever wonder that? Wow, that's what Paul said. Now, the reason why they make a big deal about this is because some people don't know any Bible at all, and yeah, they I only jump to 1 Timothy 3. Go to 1 Timothy 3. Yeah. Good. Now, non-denominational churches, Methodist churches, Presbyterian churches, all kinds of churches don't even make this mistake. There's only a fringe of weirdos who can't build up a church except through Internet. I'm only dealing with those people. Those guys who can't run a church except only through Internet, and they're a fringe bunch of weirdos who claim they're KJV-only independent Baptist. So I'm actually kicking independent Baptist churches. I'm an independent Baptist church. See that? So the thing is this, is that, uh, look, man, I'm not being biased in defending my own group and denomination. No, what I do is that I point out errors from everybody. That's what I do. So in this video, I'm not even kicking non-denominational churches, Presbyterian Methodist, or traditional type of Christian churches. They don't even believe this. It's only the strange fringe of weirdos. These strange fr fringe of weirdos. They only use this verse. This is weird. Okay, look at First Corinthians. 1 Timothy 3, 1. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, with the good work. Okay, so how do you get qualified to pastor a church? So you have to follow certain qualifications. This is what they demand of you. A bishop then must be blameless. Look at this. The husband of one wife. Now keep your hand at 1 Timothy 3 and go to Titus. Keep your hand at 1 Timothy 3 and go to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. So see that right here, it says right here that you've got to be the husband of one wife. See, you got to be married. You have to be married. So notice that in order to pastor, you've got to be married, supposedly. And then Titus would seem to point that out too. Let's look at Titus chapter 1. We will read 
Titus 1, verse 6. If any be blameless, notice the husband of one wife. See that? So this is their claim. And then verse 7, you'll notice that it's talking about the bishop. So it's a pastor again. So notice right here that if you're going to be the pastor, you have to be married. Okay? You want me to show you the, the more crazy thing that this strange fringe of weirdos do? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what they also teach. Okay? Not only do you have to get married, you have to have children to become a pastor. And I don't mean one kid. You have to have more than two. You have to have more than one. You have to have... That's what they teach. Can you imagine this poor wife, you know, hey, honey, I got to be a pastor, so let's, uh, we got to make a baby, all right? Oh, okay, honey. No, we got to make two. We're going to do it twice. <laughs> that poor woman, man. I feel, you know who I feel sorry for? I feel sorry for the poor women out there who are supposedly pastor's wives, and they were enforced or pressured, and they have this pressure of, I have to bring forth several children and I feel sorry for you poor women out there who are part of that fringe, yeah. weird little movement of pastors who would enforce you. And if they didn't enforce you, their kind of teaching forced you, pressured you, made you feel like that you have to bring forth more than one kid. That's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. If a man enforced a woman or pressured a woman to impregnate her, more than once? Doesn't that, I mean, is that a crime or what? That's something to think about. Okay. Uh, I'll show you their proof text. Verse 6, having what? Faithful children. See that? More than one. So this strange fringe pastors teach that you have to have more than one child. There's a strange group of cultic pastors who teach that. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about traditional ty type of Christian church. Okay, not non-denominational, Methodist, Presbyterian, not even Baptist, mm -hmm. not even majority of independent Baptists. This strange fringe little cult group of independent so-called Baptists teach mm -hmm. this. Yep. Very Lulu, okay? Look at 1 Timothy 3 again, okay? Verse 4, one that ruleth well his own house, having his chill, look at that, dren, see that? What in the world, okay? Now, here's the easy answer to that, okay? The easy answer is this, okay? So let's see right here, must have children, okay? These strange little cultic people, they're going to claim that they believe every word in the King James Bible. They're going to claim that, these cultic people. If they believe every word in the King James Bible, did it say that you must be married? Did it say that word for word? Did it say you must have children? Did you look at those verses? Don't you don't have don't believe a word that I'm saying. Look at that verse. Did it say you must be married? You must have children? Or the thing that they're saying is one wife. Yeah. Or did it say faithful children? Children under subjection. Now, what's the main topic here you think that he's thinking? Just having children? Just having a wife? No, he was thinking a bigger picture here. He was thinking about right here, polygamy is condemned. See that? Yeah. It is condemned for a minister to have more than one wife. See? Polygamy is the issue here. Not only that, the issue here is rebellious children. See that? What do you think is the main issue here? The main issue is right here, more than one woman. The issue here is when the children are not faithful. That's what he was focusing on. He wasn't saying you have to have more than one kid. He wasn't saying you have to, ha you have to be married. You think that was his focus, his main point when he was saying that? You got to impregnate your wife more than once. You got to impregnate her twice. You think that's what he was thinking? Or would some Lulu who claims to be independent Baptist KJV only Shame. Oh, the shame that I'm part of that group. Oh, the shame. Weird. It's better that I'm non-denominational, maybe. I don't know. All right? But, oh, the shame. The shame of that, see? You think that's what Paul was thinking? Or, when he said one wife, faithful children, he was thinking about, I'm talking about 
uh, polygamy right here. I'm talking about rebellious children here. What do you think the author was thinking when he wrote that? Use some common sense too. Who wrote this? Who wrote this? Paul, right? Why would he contradict himself here in 7-7? Seven, seven, I, I wish that all were like me, single. See, that does not make sense right there. That does not make sense. Here's another thing right here. Let's go to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, you don't have to turn there, but remember, Paul said, even as what? I, right? I. So I guess the Apostle Paul is not, is not qualified to be a minister. So then, some strange little weird cultic groups will tell you, you can't listen to this guy's teaching. Why? Show me a verse to disprove his teaching. No, no, no. I'm going to resort to an ad hominem argument and go online because I'm such a coward and I can't do anything but just gather people online and graphic arts and weird music to persuade you that this person right here, you know what? He was single. So thus he is not qualified to pastor and teach, thus discount everything that he taught and said. See, they don't look at the scripture to invalidate me or they invalidate Bible-believing preachers. What they want to do is that they want to all aim for the person and point out, look at that, look at that, look at that, with graphic music. He is single, dun, 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 and the dark, dark clouds over it yeah. so that the person can be scared and go, oh, he's evil, he's evil, you know? So you don't want to fall for that kind of nonsense. Amen. Cultic yeah. weird groups online, see? You got to be careful what you watch online nowadays. Yeah. A lot of weird things. I'm sure people will agree with me on that one. Can I use that same logic and argument with don't read Paul's writings, ignore those 13 books in the New Testament where he says salvation by grace alone, not by works. Discount all of that. Why? Because he's single. Dun, dun, dun. Like that. See, that's a we, that, no one's going to fall for that kind of logic, right? If that logic can work with me, you got to do the same thing with Paul. But let me give you a bigger one right here. So you're going to have to chop off 13 books out of your New Testament. And don't you dare use that during your soul winning. Don't you dare use that to argue salvation by grace without works. Yeah. And one more thing right here. I guess we should just reject Christianity as a whole. Mm -hmm. Was Jesus married? Did Jesus have kids? Mm -hmm. Unless those Baptist pastors want to say, yes, he was like a good old Mormon that, that they are. Jesus was not. And you know what Jesus is called? The bishop. Yeah. And I thought that the bishop must be, That's must mean, must be, must be married, must have more than one kid. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't know what they're thinking. All right, let's look at the book of First Peter. We're going to look at First Peter chapter 2, verse 25. So Paul, disqualified. He's the greatest Christian in your Bible. Jesus, the most holy man who ever lived. If you want the two greatest people in the entire Bible, these are the two. And guess what? They were single. How about that? 1 Peter 2, 25. Look at right here. For we, ye were as she going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd. Right? That verse that we looked at, Jesus is the shepherd. And what? Bishop of your souls. Look at that. Well, uh, Jesus is an exception. Okay, so you're saying that Jesus can break and violate his own rule and be a hypocrite and demand other people to do it? See, you're trying to make Jesus sin then? That does not make sense. That does not make sense. Jesus, he had to fulfill all the what? Law. He had to follow all the rules to prove that he's righteous, holy, and that he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So don't let... Peep, some weird people online fool you. This is hardly in churches, actually. This is mostly from people online. But there could be pastors in your church that you go to who will discourage you from getting involved in the ministry and demand you that you got to have a wife. And not only that, you got to have more than one kid. You got to realize this. It is wrong to rush into a marriage situation. Do you know how much of a ruined marriage you're going to get if you don't get the right woman? That's right. That is very important. You don't want to rush something into a wrong marriage right there and ruin the family home. One, and not only that, you don't want to have, you don't want to enforce children. 
that is not right either. All right. That kind of a mentality is very messed up to pressure a woman to make, to make her, to make her have more than one kid, impregnate her more than twice. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. That's not, that's almost criminal. You know, someone forcing, forcing impregnancy on you. I mean, isn't that pretty much, a, isn't that what crimes are? You know, when people force impregnation on you, I don't know. All right. But anyway, just food for thought food for thought and don't let these people like pressure you into a ruined marriage and ruin uh, family life. Those are the two most important things in any human's life mm -hmm. is a marriage and having children, the most blessed thing from the Lord. And you don't want that to be a hurried process and a forced process. It's got to be at the timing of God. And when your heart is ready and sincere, it's got to be at that kind of timetable. Marriage is so important. Having family and children is so important. It shouldn't be something where it's a forced and quick routine.